to welcome back to the channel i'm your host tkk and we are back with another video listen before i get into my points let me just first say thank you to the collective group of people that have been supporting the channel we have officially hit 7,000 subscribers and because seven is my favorite number it's a big milestone for me guys the next one i'm looking at is 10k so we're going to continue growing so i appreciate the engagement I appreciate the consistency, the support, and the transparency. If there's ever anything you feel that I can realistically do, um, please offer me your constructive criticism. I do take it to heart. So with that out of the way, today, guys, we're talking about these two processors. And I want to kind of coin and direct this video in a way where I'm speaking to whether or not you guys feel like you need to really upgrade or not. New processors out. We've got the new Intel um, i9 13th generation processor. This is the 13900K to be specific. This just came out a few days ago, so really excited. Um, and then a couple of weeks ago, I did land the new AMD Ryzen 9 processor. This is a 7950X. Um, so right here, what I have is actually my previous build. And guys, I'm going to card in some content. I spent a lot of time trying to direct some content to try to just help people if they had general questions about what you should consider if you were building a PC. So right now what I have here is everything that was pretty much listed in that video. Um, I've got the Intel i9 12900K. So prior generation, right? This is really where we're getting at on the talking points because I currently own two pretty decent high-end PCs, this one and then another one. So. Uh, this is the 12900K i9, and then I have another build that I'll show you in a second that has the 5000, the 5950X uh, Ryzen 9. So every year I typically go like after the pinnacle of both ends, but this has the Asus Strix Z690 uh, uh, motherboard with some DDR5 RAM. Um, we've got RTX 3090 Founders Edition card in here right now. We did have the 3090 Ti, but because I made the decision to give essentially this whole pc to my son i took the ti out and put the founders edition 3090 inside of this uh, we've got a corsair 850 watt power supply um, we've got a nice nzxt cooler that has a screen um, i had a gentleman that asked me a couple of days ago how i got the animation on that it's just a part of the technology but all in all this is a very capable uh, build this is capable in a lot in a lot of ways uh, this build is capable of doing some intensive vr gaming um, if that's your thing i do currently just own a mere oculus quest 2 i'm looking to get the pro but vr isn't really my like it's not my my thing right it's a uh, fun it's a nice experience i do enjoy it with my children um, but this can do that definitely for you guys it's into the simulation type of stuff um, but the big claim to fame is to this is 4k gaming and it segues into some 8k gaming with deep, deep learning super sample that proprietary technology from nvidia um, takes an internal lower resolution and then upscales it and makes it more playable um, uh, experience for you uh, this computer really really works well and my son's going to enjoy it because he's coming from some older technology do i need to upgrade no definitely not um, I built this thing. I was meticulous with it like I always do every year, or every other year when I do a build and I pick my parts based on what's going to be best for me. Um, so in some previous content, I talked to you guys about the 4090 and if you felt like you needed to upgrade, I still stand true to what I said in that video. And after watching people, even though you can see these processors are still in the boxes, I have not been yet to have the time to set these up, but I'm planning on doing so this week. I've watched Gamers Nexus, I've watched Jay's Two Cents, and a slew of other YouTubers that are reputable, intelligent, and into this tr this hobby also. Um, and a lot of people agree, like that 4090 is going to be a very sweet spot if you are gaming in the 4K space. Um, if you guys are looking to achieve that 4K gaming at a really high frame rate, um, be it natively for me, that's, that's it's got to be native for me. Or if you're into the deep learning super sampled at 3.0, that technology works really well especially with these now i'm not making this video to kind of compare if this is better if this is better um you make your own decision and do your research on that um i don't even think that you need to shoot for this because these processors these new chipsets even at the five series they're really really good for gaming so if you're budget conscious and you're thinking about you know the diminished return if you're going up to the pinnacle you know you're not going to be using it for productivity video rendering uh getting into you know some type of things like that then you don't have to spend as high as these but do you really need to upgrade your older system some of the questions that i would personally ask myself if i were you 
what type of monitor, what resolution, what refresh rate. The first question honestly should be, where's my biggest opportunity? If you've been playing on your system, are there games that you just can't run to a setting that you want to run the map? Or are you to a point where you just can't run some of the games? Some of you guys are probably still on nine series NVIDIA cards. I don't know much about the AMD cards, not my cup of tea personally. So I don't know whatever to say might be comparable for that. But if you guys are running on nine series, 10 series NVIDIA technology, you might be asking yourself, damn, what can I do to really make my system better? And it may be time for you to upgrade and do an overhaul on your stuff. Um, but for you guys that have bought stuff last year, year before, I dare say even like, you know, i9 9900K era of things, I still have a board set with that that I'm using in my Vulix Chulix cabinet, that project, I'll go ahead and card that in if you want to take a look at that. Um, it's holding up still really well. Uh, but let's transition, go to my room so we can look at this build and talk a little bit more about those people that may need to upgrade and if you got the older stuff, if you really need to. All right, guys, so let me spearhead this transition with just explaining some of the parts that's in this particular build. It's a yin and yang situation. The case, which I didn't mention in the previous transition, is a Corsair 7000D. It's white. This is obviously black, but it's the same exact case. Uh, the power supply is the same, too. It's a Corsair RM850X, a black one. The other case has a white one. They've got the same cooler, the NZXT Kraken. Um, this, however, is AMD platform. This is an AM4, so Ryzen 9 uh, 5950X. Uh, the graphics card in this, RTX NVIDIA 3090, non-TI. It's an Asus Tough um, graphics card. Works really well for me. Um, this is also going to be an Asus Tough x570 motherboard platform too so the new am5 works on 670 and so forth i digress tons of fans in this just like tons of fan in the other this is all in all ssd however uh, i've got one 250 gig sata for the operating system windows 11 pro and then i've got three nvme drives inside this thing so very good system this has been used for content creating um, i do some video renders on this um, i i've utilized this particular build primarily on my Sony A90K. Uh, I've got that TV in 48 inch. It's a brilliant white OLED uh, panel. Works really, really good. Can do some good gaming, but I really like it for what it offers me. Right now it's paired up to my Samsung S95B as I am completely getting away from the desktop gaming space and making my house into a home, getting myself more comfortable everywhere I'm at. Um, anyway, when we look at this build, the reason I'm upgrading this is just like the Intel this is gonna to go to another one of my sons um, who I purchased a pre-built for. Um, guys, I did some, some um, reviews of pre-built systems around that COVID era. I got my sons, three of my sons at least. I've got four older sons, but three of the four I have bought them pre-builts. Uh, one in Alienware and then two others, I buy power PCs. Uh, so those, those systems, or not I buy power, but MSI gaming PCs, uh, those pre-builts I'm essentially gonna be trashing and uh you know upgrading them to to these two of them at least the one with the alien where he's fine um you know we're gonna hold on to that for a little bit while longer and i'll probably do him a custom build uh not trying to rant but just letting you guys know that you know everyone's circumstance is going to be different um i see the opportunity for me to upgrade because i wanted to get my children into something nicer um and do i, I do like to keep up with the newest stuff but this system is very well capable of doing all the different things that we just talked about in the previous transition uh, VR gaming, um, 4K gaming, uh, QHD gaming, uh, ultra wide gaming, 1080p at a stupid high frame rate gaming, um, all of those things there, right? Um, and then let's just talk about cost, right? Because the big thing that a lot of people talk about with like the 4090s is that they cost so much money. Uh, my Asus, um, I'm sorry, my MSI gaming trio, uh, 1699 was the price on that car. My uh, Founders Edition 4090, 1599 was the price of that car. Uh, this car that's in front of you, to be specific, at a retail cost was $2,200. $2,199 is what this 3090 Asus Tough cost. That was retail. That was not a upseller's price. The upsell ticket on this thing was like $3,200. I've seen it as high as $3,800. It was absolutely ridiculous. 
fantastic car definitely not worth that now obviously things have changed now guys so getting to my point hey do you really need to go after something new if you've already got something that you have invested in no you do not need to this is clearly like a five thousand dollar rig when you 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 accumulate like the retail cost that i've paid for all of this stuff no inflation there uh but let's talk about like how good it can gain all right guys so just gonna use spider-man to spearhead this transition um we've got this thing on a samsung s95b this is the first quantum dot oled television um to debut 2022 we've got it in 55 inch some content on it has been on the channel so this tv is great tv man it's capable of so much um in fact i think it's uh bar none the best overall gaming tv that you can buy um the only opportunity for this uh tv in large part is that it doesn't have a heat sink nor excuse me guys it lacks a uh, build quality from an external perspective there's no dolby vision but this isn't about that um so i've got this thing running on the ryzen 9 uh, 5000 series processor rtx 3090 graphics card um let's take a look at the settings displaying graphics right so we've got the monitor which is qbq90s i don't know why it says that but this is the S95B. Um, it's an exclusive full screen, 4K, 3840 by 2160. The refresh rate is 120 hertz. This TV can actually achieve 144. Um, yeah, so brightness at 50. That's default. HDR is on. And the uh, max luminance is uh, 1499. We've got Deep Learning Super Sample on. I do not personally like to play with this, but this is a very much so trending um, piece of technology. There's a third iteration with the 4090s um, or the 40 series graphics cards. So some new stuff, but you do have the opportunity to set up performance, balance the quality. Um, if anything, I'd be playing with quality, but I really don't like to play with this on at all. So um, let's go ahead and take that off, right? So when we go to graphics, we got everything set pretty much at a, at a, um, We'll set it custom, but I go very high and then I changed a couple of different things, but we'll just go at very high just to kind of let this be where it is. Now, this game looks absolutely beautiful right here. Uh, the TV actually has a frame rate counter built into it. So just standing idle, we're above 60. Um, let's just go ahead and swing around a little bit. I mean, at some points we're hitting 100 frames. This is native 4K, no deep learning super sample. Let's try to get into these streets. Right. I mean, we're like, would you agree that this is extremely playable? I mean, this is a newer game. I mean, the game is older, but, you know, this game has been designed for PC. You know, we are playing in a space of 60 frames and higher natively. No upscaling, temporal tricks, you know, anything like that that would be similar to what you'd get on a console. Um you know, which again is my talking point here. That's all uh, right, guys. So let's conclude this. So if this was more melodramatic than it needed to be, I apologize. Um, you know, but my points stand pretty firm at this point without me even setting this up again, knowing what I'm expecting to get out of this. Again, my upgrades coming because I'm blessing my babies, putting them in a better position to have something newer than the generation's old technology that they are currently using um but outside of that you know do i need to upgrade no because that's a triple a title i was just showing you guys on the ryzen side of things and i do own a 3090 ti so again getting newer gpu puts you in a position where you know you can squeeze out those extra frames right um and then i could take advantage of technology with the current stuff that i have you know using deep learning super sample that's been an option now for a couple of graphics cards a generation since rtx that has been something that nvidia has been trying to spearhead to us and it's it's turned out to be a great piece of technology 
personally, I don't like to use it. Um, I like to play native. I just don't like to look at things and they look different. Um, I play with the best displays in the world that you can play on it from a monitor or TV perspective all the way from the G8. I'm excited to get this Intel 4090 build done so I can get back onto my G8 monitor and see what we can really get out of uh, 4K um, at 240 hertz with deep learning super sample. I'm just excited to see you know how that turns out to be. But uh, my build currently, my new build, when I get this thing going, it's going to be on the Sony Quantum Dot, the Alpha 95 King. Um, excited to see that. So I like to play raw native just with things the way that they're supposed to look and that's it. Um, so you guys don't really have to shoot for the top. You know, if you do end up getting one of these, just keep in mind the reasoning that I haven't got mine done is outside of time restraints. Um, it's availability of motherboards. There's not a wide variety of boards and I'm a little disappointed about that. Normally you would have a harder time finding the processor chips, but now it's more so the boards. How can you not have motherboards, but you got processors? I don't really understand that. So maybe there's something going on that I don't get. Um, but if you guys feel like you must have a 4090, I don't think the value is too bad. Like I said, the 3090 that I bought, the Asus Tough, that card was $2,200. I mean, you know, I bought the 3090 TI Founders Edition and that card was only $2,000. So it was, it was $200 cheaper than the partner card of the previous iteration now you can get something that's way better because the 4090 leap is is really elite and i'm really impressed to see them come out the gate with something so strong and it costs only a hundred dollars more than what the previous iteration um 3090s costed so it's really good so i don't know again i'm appreciative of you guys we're at 7,000 subscribers we're on the road to 10k we're going to keep the content coming um very consistently so if you guys got any uh you know, constructive criticism or some feedback for this talking point video, please let me know. I'm going to catch you guys on the next one. Peace. God bless. Bill's going to be coming soon. Max love.